All right, welcome everybody. I, uh, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going to try to keep this short. Those of you that don't know me, I am Randy Kindig. I do uh, a lot of podcasting these days. I do the Floppy Days podcast on vintage computers. I do uh, a co-host on Antic, which covers the Atari computers. <clears throat> I also uh, am a part-time co-host on the TRS-80 Trash Talk podcast. And um, occasionally do a Stan Beat podcast with uh, David Gruish. So I uh, seems like most of my time these days that I spend the vintage computers has to do with the podcasting. But what I wanted to to do was talk a little bit about modern upgrades for the uh, uh, computers. Uh, as I'm doing the podcast, I come across a lot of modern modern upgrades that are available for the machines and I love to talk about those I think those are, are incredible as much as I love the old machines and I love playing with the real machine <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of the old floppy drives or the old printers or the old modems I'm just not that, a big fan of those they're, they're they're finicky they're they're slow they're uh, more likely to give you a problem than um, than the computer will so uh, I'm always looking for upgrades for the vintage computers. And I do have a lot of different computers, a lot of different computer types. So <clears throat> I'm going to try to talk about um, some of the stuff that I've come across, try to cover all the major platforms, what's available. Some of you are going to know more than I do about what's available for some of these machines. But I'm just trying to broadly cover a, a bunch of different machines and what's available. So I'm going to start out with the Atari 8-bit. That's one that's near and dear to my heart. I know there's a lot of Atari uh, options available out there for increasing your enjoyment of the machine. And <clears throat> some of the upgrades I'm going to talk about are uh, like floppy replacements, uh, network cards, those sorts of things. One that's available for the Atari is called the SIO to SD. SIO being the serial I.O. port on the Atari. And so this is an SD floppy replacement that's available from a gentleman by the name of Lothric in Poland. It seems like a lot of Atari stuff comes out of Poland. So uh, this one is really nice. It has a little LCD display, lets you pick what disk image you want to, uh, to bring up. It's uh, very compatible with all the software that's out there. So that's definitely a good one to get. There's also SIO to PC, <clears throat> which basically allows you to use your modern PC as a file server for the Atari. And uh, there's serial and USB versions available. What I like about this is that to the Atari, your modern PC looks exactly like a floppy drive. And so it even, you even get the sound of the, the iconic sound of the Atari disk drive the disk loading sound on the Atari uh, when you use this device. So it, it works really well and um, I, I have this device. This is available from Atari Max. There's also a compact flash option. The Atari Max also has this device. It's a, again, it's a floppy replacement and it's um, very compatible with a lot of the different uh, software that's out there. It even has onboard RAM and onboard flash memory. There's the ultimate one megabyte, so of course RAM upgrades is something that that uh, that you need on these old machines. This is a one megabyte upgrade for the Atari. Uh, again, Lothric is the one who sells this. It does take a little bit of soldering, but uh, uh, it, it's uh, very powerful. It'll, it'll simulate pretty much all of the different memory upgrades that have ever been available for the Atari. There's also a network card called the Dragon Cart. Uh, I do have one of these. Uh, so this is the only network card that I'm aware is available for the Atari 8-bits. Uh, I did interview the gentleman who developed this on Floppy Days, if you want to listen to that sometime, I'm sorry, on Antic, 
I'm getting my podcast mixed up. On Antic, I did uh, interview the guys who developed this, but it will run a, an IP stack and allow you to do some networking. <clears throat> There's also a video upgrade for the Atari called VBXE, also available from Lothric. It'll give you RGB output and uh, give you additional graphics resolutions that you don't typically have on an Atari. You can get 80 character mode. Uh, I don't have this upgrade, but I know some people do and they really, really like this. There is a Bluetooth option. So again, this, this works similar to some of the other uh, SIO options in that it will simulate a disk drive. So again, you can use your, your PC as a file server, but through a Bluetooth connection. And uh, I actually have one in my pocket here. So it just fits in the SIO port. All the, all the circuitry is inside a standard SIO plug and it connects to your modern computer via Bluetooth. And then once the connection is made, there's software you can run on your modern computer that will make it look like a disk drive to the Atari. And then you can do your file transfer. The only difficulty with this is that you have to reconnect to Bluetooth every time you know, that you turn it on. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time. But <clears throat> we have the. Uh, I'm going to move on to the Commodore 64 and Commodore 128. I know there are going to be people out there that know more about this than I do, but uh, I wanted to mention a few of the things that I am aware of. And uh, Jim Brain, of course, was just talking about some of the things that he has. So this is going to be a rehash a little bit of what he talked about. But he does have an SD interface for the Commodore 64 and 128 called the Micro IEC. There's also the 64 NIC Plus network card. Again, this is from Jim Brain for network compatibility. I think there might be some other network cards also available for the Commodore line. There's uh, the these uh, these are pretty nice. These are a little SD-based floppy emulation. You can find lots of these on eBay. Lots of different people make these. Um, a lot of them seem to come from international sources, but uh, I think there are a few that are in the U.S. And um, they even make them look like little, you know, Commodore floppy disk units. So those are pretty cool. There's the Commodore Wi-Fi modem, which is a pretty new thing. I think, in fact, just before the show, uh, the gentleman's name is Leaf, and I can't remember his last name now. Bloomquist. Yeah, it is on the card. There it is. Yeah, Leaf Bloomquist said that um, he's going to make this available for sale, and that uh, someone here at the show, I think, may even have this. Um, I think they're in the showroom. Are they? Okay. But this is this is a, basically gives you Wi-Fi. A capability from your Commodore 64, so, so it sounds pretty cool. I don't have one, so I don't know that much about it. On to the VIC-20. There are a few options available for the VIC-20. Again, Jim probably talked about his Ultimem. I was going to pick one of these up at the show. So if you want to expand your VIC-20 to one megabyte of RAM, and it also has flash ROM on it, this is a good option. There's also the VIC MIDI cartridge, which I know he talked about because I know it was being passed around the room. So you can actually get MIDI on your VIC-20. There is, There are actually several mega cart options so that you can buy one cartridge. It'll have a huge amount of software, pretty much everything that's available for the VIC-20 available. Uh, on the one cartridge. And um, the multi-card is one I've been trying to get, but they only make a run once in a while. And I have not been able to get this yet. The TI-99. 
probably the one of the uh, well, one of the two best options I think for enhancing your TI-99 is a CF7 plus or or the nano PEB basically takes the gigantic peripheral expansion box that you have for the TI-99 shrinks it down to a to a card uh, it says compact flash based it uh, has 32k of RAM on it just like you can put in the in the uh, PEB and there are different versions of it you can get a serial version or a parallel version and um, I actually have a parallel version of this hey, yeah Chain with this? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't believe so. Okay, you can have like more than one. I've seen more than one. There are for the TI-99. There are devices that allow you to just hook them until right. you have something six feet long. Yeah. There's also the other the other really nice option for the TI-99 is the F-18A. So this enhances the video. It's a, a pin compatible replacement for the video chip that's in the TI-99. It gives you VGA output, 640 by 480. It also fixes some of the other issues with graphics on a, TI, a regular TI-99, such as now you're able to have 32 sprites all in one scan line, and you get 80 column mode. So this does require a little bit of modifying your case in order to get the VGA port out of the inside of the machine, but um, this is one of the next things I want to pick up for my TI. And there's also a multi-cart available that has uh, 512K of uh, ROM and uh, 128K of, of GROM. Has huge amount of software on it. So again, with this cartridge, pretty much everything that you might need, you can get on this one cartridge and uh, um, you don't have to do any swapping. It's all, it's all available from the menu. The Apple II is another platform that has a large number of upgrades available. The number one option if you're going to get an upgrade is a CFFA 3000. Uh, I have one of these. These are great. It, it's a compact flash, um, compact flash version uh, that replaces your floppy drive or hard drive. And it will work in the Apple II or the Apple II GS. And um, it's, it's really a wonderful device. He makes a run, when I say he, it's Rich Dreher. He makes a run, I think, twice a year. And he doesn't make a run unless he thinks he's going to sell 500 of these. And so he sells 500 at a pop every time he makes a run of these. So that's pretty amazing that there's that much you know, desire for, for a, an upgrade. There are some other options also. There's a uh, RamWorks memory grade option, uh, which also has a VGA extender card that works along with it. That's available from A2 Heaven. And so you can get VGA output from your Apple II, as well as being able to have eight meg of RAM, which, which would be pretty nice. Have you used one of those? I, d I haven't, I haven't got this yet. Do they have any ideas what the picture of the video looks like? No. Okay. There's an Ethernet card, which is the, I think, probably the most common network card that's available for the Apple II. Has a built-in TCP IP stack, and uh, some software has been enhanced to work with that, uh, with that card. So you can get networking. And I'm going to move on to the Coco, and then again, I know there are plenty of Coco people here that are going to know more about this than I do. I do have a Coco SDC, which is the um, SD-based floppy replacement, and um, I even have a little case case for it. Somebody made cases for them because otherwise it comes as a bare board. But this this is really nice. It uh, uh, Emulates both the Tandy and Dragon DOS floppy disk controller. It's got uh, extensions 
to disk extended basics so you can uh, so you can use use it effectively um, it, it actually can be mounted in one of the standard Tandy uh, disk controller cartridges that's available as well. There's the Triad 512 meg upgrade. So if you want to put 512 meg in your Coco, this uh, looks to be a good option. I don't have this yet, but I do plan to get one. I understand, I don't know, did Jim talk about the Coco NIC? Because I know that's something that he's working on. It's the network card for the Coco. Did he mention that at all during his talk? I didn't catch all of his talk, no. I know he's working on a network card for the Coco, and um, I think he was going to have a prototype here at the show. Terrace 80, model 1, 3, 4, and 4P. It's amazing that there are so many options available for the TRS-80 line, but there's some really great stuff. Uh, Peter Bartlett's in here. I know if you want to go to his table and see the mice, you, know, you probably want to take a look at that. I have one of these. Uh, basically, it's got uh, compact flash for hard drive. It's got, uh, it's got a um, VGA output. It's got networking on it. It's got a joystick controller, so I mean it, it really gives your Terra 80 Model 1, and there's also a version for the Model 3 called the Mies, I guess is the official name, Mies or Mies. Uh, so this is a great device, and you may want to stop by Peter's booth and take a look at that if you're interested in anything for your Terra 80. There also, for the Model 1, 3, and 4, is the uh, FRED, which is a hard drive emulator. And uh, it's an SD-based hard drive emulator. This is available from Ian Maverick. There's also a Quinterface, which is an uh, expansion interface replacement also available from Ian. So you can get 32K of RAM without having an expansion interface for your Model 1. There's high-res boards. There are different versions of the high-res boards for, uh, <clears throat> for upgrading the graphics on your Model 1, 3, 4, 4P. Even the TRS-80 Model 100 has a couple of options available for it. There's the Rex, which is an option plug-in ROM that will give you, uh, well, there's a lot of different option ROMs that were written to work with this. And it will give you some flash memory. Do you know, that should work across all of them, right? Yeah. The 102. One, the one at 100 or 102, yeah. Yeah, there is a, ver I think there might be a different version for the NEC. Um, there's the NADS box, which you actually can't get anymore, I don't believe, but it uh, gives you a solid state uh, disk drive or uh, floppy drive replacement. There's the Tandy MC10 has an upgrade for it called the MCX128. So that'll give you 128K of RAM for it, for this this little little brother of the Coco. And uh, it also has um, MCX Basic on it, which will give you more basic options. And even the HP 41 calculator, there is a circuit board that you can get. You take the circuit board out of your HP 41, replace it with this, and it speeds it up, it gives you more registers, more, uh, it has a bunch of software built into it, and uh, you know, it just makes it a, a much, much nicer machine. Have you done that? I have not done this. I've thought about it. <laughs> so that's really all I want to talk about was uh, 
all these options. Anybody have any questions about any of this? Well, the the Rex, uh, it's yeah. very, very difficult to get this. The fellow who makes it uh -huh. uh, will not work during the summer because it's too hot. And therefore, uh, you, you wait until the weather cools, and then you hope that the thing finally gets to you. And this is very, very irritating. <laughs> I didn't have any trouble getting mine, but I must have caught him at the right time. So. Yeah, it was during cool weather. Yeah, okay, I don't know. <laughs> Could be. And yeah, Nick? Just, um, just the Dragon card, the, uh, yeah. Are those actually still available? Because I thought I heard that they were no longer. I think the two gentlemen who made it still have a little stash of them uh, that they're willing to give out to people who are willing to write software for it. Uh, because they, you know, they want to... They want to see it uh, become more popular. Anybody else have anything? Hey, yeah. What is the price range of this range in terms of these tend to be the spread, for example, was a little more pricey than I thought. Yeah, I think Fred Fred is like 179. Um, it depends. I mean, they they all this one. For the HP 41 is pretty expensive. I think it's like 250 or 300 dollars for this one. Some range up to 400. Yeah. Like the Mies maybe or the the Mize is a little over 300, yeah. I think. And uh, just trying to give an idea for the CFA CFFA 3000 is very reasonable. It's about 150 dollars when that comes out. Anything else? All right. Thank you.